On March 11, 2020, Mississippi confirmed its first case of COVID-19. Since then, COVID has infected more than 300,000 Mississippians and killed more than 7,000. But then, in March 2021, Mississippi became the second state in the nation to make all of its residents eligible to receive a COVID vaccine. Since then, about 28% of Mississippi's total population has been fully vaccinated. So I talked to five Mississippians about what the last year has been like for them and how their lives have changed since they became fully vaccinated. Hi, I'm Will Stripling, Mississippi Today's healthcare and breaking news reporter. For many Mississippians, the COVID-19 pandemic has challenged their mental health and disrupted their ways of life. Well, uh, as far as having much of a life, it wasn't one. Uh, as far, uh, you know, uh, with, uh, with the newspaper job, which I'm sure you're familiar with, uh, it was completely sheltered for the, you know, uh, there was no, there was no travel. There was, uh, uh, you know, we, we got to see people out of the car and it, it was, uh, I mean, this is where pretty much this room was, uh, where I was for over a year. Doing regular activities such as going grocery shopping, uh, and uh, going uh, uh, other places for meetings, doctor's appointments, uh, trying to go out to dinner every once in a while, and general entertainment. That all came to uh, a halt pretty much. And at the same time, uh, it really created uh, the need to develop uh, new behaviors that we just weren't used to and comfortable with. I still have a... Uh a uh, one-year-old granddaughter I haven't seen yet. Uh, they're living in Nashville. So, you know, it, it's been kind of closed in. We have more patients now than we've ever had. We've always had a shortage of mental health providers where I am in South Mississippi, and this has made it much, much worse. Um, people are seeking services, and a lot of folks can't accept any more new patients right now. Um, a lot more anxiety and depression since Corona has been in the picture. It, it's, it's been very different. Um, a lot of counselors started doing telehealth and telehealth didn't really work for my population of children that I see. And a lot of the children that I see have a additional things going on, you know, with families. Some of my kids are in the foster care system. So it's been a lot of upheaval this past year. In January, the Mississippi Department of Health released its vaccination rollout plan, but that rollout looked a lot different in practice. I feel like it was a poor decision to not have teachers go higher in the line. I think it was a poor decision in the sense to announce it suddenly. I think a lot of teachers would have appreciated a heads up or just like a further notice, like, hey, at some point in this week, it, the portal will open. I know a lot of educators, actually, I was vaccinated prior to it um, opening. I was a smoker. The only good thing I've ever done for myself, I guess, was to smoke. And I have a one pre-existing condition that uh, isn't serious, but it was on the list. So I got it in February, actually. But I know so many of my fellow teachers, they like took off work immediately. Um, like it was just like a huge like inconvenience and mess for them because obviously they want to get vaccinated. There's a lot of, you know, people, they have elderly parents. They just wanted to be able to get vaccinated and they were, a, you know, below the age of 65. So I think that it would have been a lot more efficient either for people to be notified or for there even to be like a rollout by district, not district as in like school district, but like even the congressional districts, like teachers in district two. Okay, now teachers in district three, it's your turn. As more Mississippians became eligible for the vaccine, some immediately jumped at the chance to make an appointment while others were more hesitant. I get to work from home. And so I wasn't really you know, super into trying to hurry up and get vaccinated because I figured like everybody else have their turn. Like I can wait. Um, even though I do work in 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 schools, um, you know, I'm not in schools right now. So, and then I wanted to see like a little bit of around. Um, let other people kind of take it and see what happens to them. So I'm an educator, and it's really important to me that I would be able to keep myself and my students safe. I 
absolutely felt like school should not be open until every teacher is vaccinated and all children are in households that are vaccinated. That's just me, um, especially because I work in a high poverty area that is predominantly African American and there is a lot of pre-existing health conditions even within my student population. Before we knew there was a vaccine, I was very hopeful that something would be created that would be a protective measure. And so when they were testing the vaccines and they were coming out with the efficacy rates in the uh, mid to I get mid 90s, I was pretty sure I wanted to get one. And fortunately, I was able to get mine a little early because I am a mental health professional. So when they opened it up in stages after they vaccinated hospital level folks, they opened it up to other medical professionals. And that's when I got my first one. Although Lauren Huddleston was initially hesitant about getting vaccinated, a call from a family member later changed her mind. My sister called and said, hey, can grandma come stay with you for a little while? You know, and I was like, great, you know, I wish she would just live here. Um, and so I was like, oh, well, let me go ahead and get vaccinated because my grandmother, I don't want to, if I can avoid it, because um, she's very, very elderly. She's in her 90s. And so I started looking around for that. And some of my friends actually ended up getting vaccinated and they were like, oh, it's fine. I did it. You know, um, some weeks had passed by. Some people, friends, family had, had gotten it. So I said, okay, you know, I feel pretty comfortable um, with doing it. Um, and then my father actually passed away. And in order to travel abroad, you have to have had a COVID test. And um, I had never gotten one before that. And I was like, oh, I got to go over to Jamaica. So my husband and I um, got vaccinated with the Johnson & Johnson like two days before we had, we had to travel. Um, and so that is really what prompted like my very quick kind of like, oh, we got to get it now because I want to get the most protection possible because um, I didn't want to honor, honor my father and go to the funeral. Early on in the COVID pandemic, many Mississippians struggled to make online vaccine appointments due to an over-encumbered online vaccine appointment system and phone lines without enough operators. Others struggled to find a vaccination site in their county with open appointments. Later, a historic winter storm wreaked havoc on the state which prompted the state health department to shut down vaccination sites and reschedule appointments. Despite all these hurdles, every Mississippian I've talked to has been surprised by how efficient the state's drive through vaccine sites have been run, in large part thanks to the help of the Mississippi National Guard. The first site actually, uh, <clears throat> the wait time was not that long. It was about 30 minutes uh, in addition to the 15 minute wait after you receive uh, the vaccination. Uh, the second time, the second dose that I got, the wait period, uh, including the 15 minutes uh, waiting time after the vaccination, was about an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, uh, however, there, there on the second dose experience, there were a lot more assistance from the National Guard than during the first uh, visit. Uh, and so even though it was along the way, the lines were longer, uh, they were seeing a lot more volume. And I thought they did an excellent job, given the circumstances of uh, getting everyone through. Um, and uh, having the uh, resources and the help and support of the National Guard with the uh, health workers was really, I think, a, a tremendous uh, uh, success. The drafters were great. Um, the National Guard people were just so funny and friendly. And my shot experiences, both of them were so good. I didn't feel them give them to me. Um, so I guess that's about as high of praise as I can give for a shot. You didn't feel them stick you. Although these Mississippians are now fully vaccinated, none of them feel like their lives have returned to normal just yet. I, I read somewhere that they are expecting to like do a booster shot maybe for the Johnson & Johnson at some point, which I kind of expected in a way. I, I don't really think that I changed. Nothing like that really changed in my brain. Um, as I go out into the world, I still wear my mask. I still make sure my kids wear it. My husband wears his mask at work because he does work, you know, around other people. 
Um, but it does give me a little bit of a security in the back of my mind to feel like, okay, I have a, I could potentially have a lower risk of like endangering loved ones or other people out in the world. Um, and it, you know, makes me feel like, like I'm doing all I can um, to, to like, you know, make sure people are safe. I wish I could say that I was more impressed, but we have a lot of people who this whole time haven't wanted to do anything, haven't wanted to distance, haven't wanted to mask. Um, I don't know. The people who want to get the vaccine have gotten the vaccine. And I think that's kind of where we are statewide right now is they have these doses that they can't get distributed in a timely manner. Everybody who wants it has kind of stepped up and that's going to be a problem as far as this working and us getting some herd immunity and being able to get out of this. Lauren Huddleston is one of several Mississippi parents whose children participated in remote learning this past school year. In April, she and her husband debated whether they should send their 13-year-old daughter back to school for state testing. Uh, so after, you know, going through all these, you know, family issues, when they first emailed and said, oh, the kids are going to take the state test next month at the school, I was like, okay, sure, fine, whatever, you know, we'll cross their boat when we come to it, because you can't. Um, it was a month, like a month before, you know, they gave us a month in advance notice. I'm like, you don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow. Like, like, the whole city could shut down. And you're like, you just have no, like, you could say you're going to do something in a month, but you're probably not going to do it, right? Like, you know, with the water stuff, like, I'm like, yeah, fine, we'll do it, sure, thinking in my head, you know. And then as time got closer, um, and I kind of talked about it with her, and she talked about it with her dad. She really wanted to go to school because her friends were going, and... Um, I told her like last week, like, I don't think I, I don't think you're going to go. And she was just like, she like started crying. She was like, what do you mean? I'm not going to go. I'm like, I don't feel safe anymore. You know, like we've had a lot of things happening The numbers are going back up again. And I just would rather you just stay at home and maybe you can take it like the retest or maybe you can like not take it at all. Cause like, you know, and she was crushed and, um, so she talked to her dad about it and her dad's like, yeah, you can go. And his position was she needs to like be around like her people, like her friends. And um, it, in, in, I think it's a trade-off, right? Because, you know, it, I don't know if it's worth the trade, but, but definitely um, she went yesterday and, and she, you know, she, she came home, she was fine. She said they were very safe. They sanitized, they wiped everything down. They were doing one at a time and like they had marks on the floor. So, and there weren't many kids in the room with her. So it made me feel safer to send her back for the second day. But yeah, it, it's, I don't know. It's, I have a lot of feelings. <laughs> Despite any lingering fears, these fully vaccinated recipients are trying to think positively about the future and enjoy pandemic life as they can. There are a lot of things we've been wanting to do. And uh, most recently, you know, we're doing, uh, putting in new flooring in a couple of the bedrooms. Well, we've gone to places to look at flooring. I mean, that's just, uh, it's- a, Imagine that. <laughs> yeah, it's a completely different concept, you know? Uh, we've been to five or six different stores. I mean, that's just incredible. My students have a computer for the first time in their life, like in their life, like in their family's life, the first time they've ever had a computer in their home and a computer that was personally theirs. Like in the beginning of the pandemic and even before the pandemic, I was teaching kids like how to type on a computer for the first time, how to send an email. And they're smart kids. They literally didn't have a device. Like they only had a phone that was on some of the time, like that you can't, you can't use data if your phone is like limited. So that was a positive thing, like that kids in the Delta could use the computer all the time is incredible. And it's gonna change like the generation for sure. Getting more Mississippians vaccinated has now become a community effort with many encouraging their family, friends and neighbors to get the vaccine. If you don't have a legitimate medical reason to not get your vaccine, get your vaccine. Please, 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 please. I understand there are people with different viewpoints and the politics sometimes can make things um, a little fuzzy, but I think practicing uh, one's individual rights comes with uh, also individual responsibilities. 
Um, and, uh, and one of those responsibilities uh, is to uh, care for and, and serve your fellow man. And that's it for the first episode of MT Speaks. I want to give a special thank you to everyone who filled out our survey and those who took the time to talk with me over Zoom. And we still want to hear from you. What was your vaccination experience like? Leave us a comment on YouTube or Facebook or tweet us at Mississippi Today News. You can also check out all of our COVID-19 case and vaccination resources at MississippiToday.org.